Hello and welcome to Cinema Express. My name is Ramnik Kachrekar. Today we have with us a uh, national award winning cinematographer Mr. Sudeep Chatterjee. It's a master class in cinematography. So through this conversation, I personally want to learn more about the craft uh, through uh, Mr. Sudeep's experiences. uh so thank you very much for doing this uh it's it's great thank you thank you. my pleasure yeah so let's go little back in time so my first question w- would be what's the first film that you remember seeing in the theaters well the first film i remember seeing in theaters you know i have uh, vague memories of watching gopi gain bagavain by satyajit ray um oh, yeah. and gopi gain bagavain and i think also uh pothir pachali uh, which okay. i didn't understand much i just remember it being very sad and i remember uh, uh, the gopi gain bagavain i really we used to enjoy we used to enjoy the songs we used to sing the songs as kids mm. and i must have been really small uh, but what i mostly remember from watching pothir pachali is that it must have been a very bad print because uh, there were a lot of scratches and mm. i used to uh, ask my father why does it always rain in this film okay okay because it's like it was rain and, and yeah uh, Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, but the, I mean it must have been a really old print uh, or a scratch print. Mm. But I distinctly remember that. But yeah, that uh, apart from that, you know, uh, I was actually I have to uh, uh, tell you, it's quite funny. I was uh, uh, after that uh, my uncle's place somewhere in Nagpur. Mm. Uh, my uncle uh, and my and my mother and my brother we went to see. Uh, I was later told the film was uh, Dushman. Uh, Rajesh Khanna's Dushman, and there was an accident uh, scene in that, and I just totally freaked out. I must have been four or five years old, and I really freaked out, and 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 that uh, you know the blood and all that really got on my things. I started crying, and I, my uncle had to sit with me outside the theater. Um, and ever since then, I used to be very scared of going to the theaters. I thought it was something scary, and I would like really create a scene if I was being taken to the theater. Uh, in fact, when we were in class five. Um, the school took us to watch star wars and oh, uh, okay and i was very the scared first i was one, like the first one new the first one yeah yeah okay. just release uh. and i was uh, too scared to uh, too uh, scared but i was too embarrassed to tell that to admit to my friends and to my teachers so i went and i thought you know let's uh, let me just try to shut my eyes and like you know if it gets too mm. horrific mm. and it was very overwhelming for me i remember but uh, i started watching star wars and then i kind of uh, started enjoying it but you know we were not allowed to my father didn't allow us to watch hindi films okay it was uh, i mean he uh, he was uh, i think there was at that point of time uh, uh, hindi cinema was kind of looked down upon a bit because it was uh, uh, like my father thought he, he was uh, culturally oriented in a certain way and mm. uh, he was trying to make sure that we watch quality content uh, till we are we kind of grow up a little bit so he took us to all good hollywood films or international films or or if there was a good big one hindi films of course if there was a good hindi one but mostly hindi films were like uh, uh, more the well there was a bit of a looking down upon that so we are not allowed really and officially the first film uh, mm. i have seen in the theater uh, after my class 10th was mm. shole this was one of the reruns of shole i'd seen okay. a few before that it was like i'd gone to my cousin's place and there but all that was uh, without telling my father mm. i'd watched a few amitabh bachchan films That's fascinating. Wow, wow. wow. So, uh, at what point in your life did you start uh, developing this this uh, attraction towards cinematography? How did that happen? No, it's cinematography didn't really start uh, 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 primarily. It was it was initially photography, um, okay. and it was also uh, a realization that came very slowly. I think at some point I was very interested in uh, in creating an image, and mm. as a child. Uh, I mean, the only way you can create an image is if you paint a picture, or if you sketch, or or do something like that. So I think I was really seeking that uh, uh, opportunity to um, to express myself visually. But mm. uh, that craft, I didn't know very well. Uh, okay. I was not. Uh, uh, I was not. I didn't know how to paint or or, or sketch or draw. Mm. Uh, I would make several attempts, and mm. it was pretty frustrating because the image that was in my mind wouldn't get translated. Okay. Uh, so later, when I discovered a camera, 
on some uh, on a on a family vacation mm. and uh, i enjoyed taking those pictures and looking okay. at my uh, interest in you know uh, my father uh, bought me a camera when i was in class 10 it was a very basic russian um, mm. slr camera it was okay. called zenith 12xp and so he got me the camera and uh, and for me that was like a very very major uh, uh, development thing because you know, I, i realized that i could take my i could create my own image i okay. could look at things uh, my way like if it was a simple portrait of my sister uh, it was still the way i was looking at her and uh, okay. that was very fascinating for me that you know this is a way of Uh, creating my own image. How, how did you get into FTIA? Because you graduated from FTIA, right? How did so? Uh, you must have uh, seen cinema through a particular lens until a point, right? While growing up, you were attracted to films, the 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 big Hollywood films. They were this lavish and all. But when you uh, start seeing it from a theoretical point of view, which I'm sure FTIA would have best of the knowledge to you, how did that change your perspective towards cinematography? No, I, I mean, let, let me just uh, try to tell you what the process was for me. Uh, mm. You know, uh, initially the attraction to cinema was when you we were uh, in school. The attraction was Hindi films, and okay. uh, uh, and uh, and that's something that uh, my brother uh, uh, was a little elder than me, so he already had access to those, and he could okay. go and watch it, and he would, uh, and he would uh, uh, in the night he would direct those. Uh, if you if you seen a film, he would. Mm. Uh, narrated to me and not just once several times he would narrate and then we would have a discussion mm. about that and he we, he and me had a game that you know uh, he would say oh, come on if you were making this film how would you do it and okay. know, how would you do it we'll make a, you know we'll make one film of us in may say in, in, we'll do this differently or we'll do that way so there was some conversation very strangely i don't know why we started what triggered us and uh, several times when we were doing photography and this photography was something again we are doing together we would also talk of a, a shot that you know we can start here and we can end here even on in a still photography so i think that kira was somewhere there but i don't know where it came from really and uh, uh, and from somewhere around that time i mean uh, i started seeing films a little critically and okay. how is it made okay. and, and something about the way it's made uh, okay mm. what has been done how how is it how, how is it coming together that mm. did fascinate me a lot and uh, with that with that uh, my interest in photography which was mm. also growing parallelly uh, mm. this was uh, i think it was all coming together and uh, uh, then i all that had happened i, I you know i uh, joined uh, engineering college and you know i, I studied there you for dropped a few out, months and then you dropped out from engineering i dropped i i, I kind of ran away from the way because uh, after 7 8 months i realized that uh, this uh, wasn't happening for me i was deeply unhappy uh, yeah. i just the idea of myself uh, becoming an engineer and doing a job and all it's just not giving me any happiness i definitely mm. something was telling me from inside that i i want something more creative i want something more visual uh, mm. that's what in fact uh, when i came back and i had a conversation with my father he asked me that uh, uh, you know uh, what do you want to do if you don't want to do this i had no answer i said i don't know so he said then okay what do you enjoy if enjoyment uh, is so important to you then uh, what is it that you really enjoy and uh, i told him i, I really enjoy uh, taking pictures I mean, I, I I want to become a photographer. Mm. So that was for 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 some time. That was uh, uh, what I thought I wanted to do. Uh, mm. Then uh, along that time, when I was doing my graduation in Kolkata, I started watching a lot of films, and this was would be like uh, a lot of a uh, uh, lot of Hollywood films, a lot of international cinema that I could get access to because of my film club uh, membership. There was like cine, okay. um, uh, you know, there, there were these cine clubs, uh, a lot yeah. of them in Kolkata. I would mm. myself, uh, me and my brother, we were. Uh, Uh, part of a club called the Rithik Cine Society. Okay. So uh, they, in collaboration with Cine Central, would have uh, regular uh, screenings in Nandon and in, 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 in theaters. And we and we got we got to see a lot of European films, a lot of Latin American films, mm. uh, a lot of international cinema. And that mm. kind of uh, you know already there was a lot of interest in cinema and photography. So for me, kind of it was very natural progression. Uh, it, what helped was that that my brother. who was also uh, uh, in a search uh, uh, similar to mine he'd already mm. graduated and he uh, decided to go to fti in fact oh. i got to know of fti from him he went to study film direction mm. and 
well, it became very clear to me that okay, then Dada is going to uh, study direction, and I want to study cinematography. So okay. um, I had to wait to become a graduate, and then I sat for the entrance exam, and uh, I got a nifty. What, what did you uh, like? Two questions. Uh, what are the films, the, the European or Hollywood films that influenced you the most about uh, driving your passion towards cinematography? Can you name a few? I'd say a few classics like Lawrence of Arabia. Uh, mm. Uh, yeah, Lawrence. Huh. Uh, yeah, that was that was something. Uh, did you watch it on the big screen? Did you watch Lawrence? I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow! Yeah, yeah. Wow! The Spielberg films, uh, uh, you know, E.T. and uh, Jaws, and mm -hmm. uh, a few Scorsese films. Uh, I think it was Scarface and uh, Brian De Palma's movies. Those are regular Hollywood films, but a lot of uh, uh, international cinema also. I was like really blown by Wild Strawberries and mm -hmm. uh, Fanny Alexander and mm -hmm. Silence by Ingmar Bergman. Mm -hmm. um, Breathless by Godard and uh, Four Hundred Doors by Truffaut, Truffaut. and uh, a few Wim Wenders films. I think the one was, that really fascinated me was uh, uh, Kings of the Road, uh, Wim mm. Wenders, mm. and wow. So these are all the films that attracted me. One Bonuel film, I think. Bonuel's oh, okay. Lost Olive in the Doors. These are films oh, okay. that made a very strong impression, uh, like even before I went to FDI, just from the film club screenings. From from a cinematography perspective. I mean, from a cinematic uh, perspective, I would okay. say. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, like cinematography, I I was very interested, but uh, you know, how to look at cinematography, something uh, uh, so from a more technical point of view. That's you know, that really starts after uh, I went to FTI. Okay. Okay. Tell me about that. No, like, uh, how did FTI shape your understanding of the craft? It's a broad question, but let me try. Mm. Cinema, see, uh, what happens when you go to FTI, initially, uh, you're, uh, uh, it's quite overwhelming because you're in a, suddenly in that uh, atmosphere where, you know, everyone's breathing cinema 24 cinema. hours a day. It's like, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And, and you get to see films, not just get to see, you're, you're discussing the film. So, uh, like, there's a lot of, with your batchmates, with your seniors, there's a lot of discussion with the professors. Uh, mm -hmm. Suddenly, uh, you're talking about films in a very, very... Uh, uh, Analytical, you know, formulated way. Uh -huh. Yeah, not just theoretical. It's a very, in a very formulated way, um, okay. and 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 your perspective changes on that. And you also, uh, I know, till now, uh, uh, these kind of films, the experience will be very personal. Now you're just sharing it with a lot of people, and you're opening up, and and you're uh, you're learning uh, about cinematography. So you're you know noticing uh, uh, films with a, with a lot more detail and with a lot more uh, uh, with a very different kind of a perspective. And uh, and in fact, I, I I have to tell you that uh, after a few months of FTI, I uh, noticed that uh, uh, I'm being too uh, critical and objective and careful when I'm watching films. I'm like trying to notice cinematography. I'm trying to no notice every small detail. And sometimes I felt that well, I'm not really uh, enjoying the film. Enjoying the film. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, primarily I, I came into this because I enjoyed movies, and you know, uh, this kind of such a detailed analytical look while I'm watching the film is like ruining my film experience. So I kind of you know, shut it down, uh, shut that, uh, shut it down in the sense I trained myself to kind of watch the film, enjoy the film, and watch the film, and like, enjoy it when I'm watching, and and kind of recording everything uh, in your in the back of your mind to hmm. you know to play it back in your mind uh -huh. and and to analyze it later, but. Uh, that joy I didn't want to lose from watching a film. Hmm. Okay. You know, now also I, I I make sure that when I'm watching a film, I'm watching it very neutral from a very very from a very neutral audience point of view, and I really enjoy the experience. And uh, um, and you know, in any case, I enjoy watching movies too much. I mean, uh, a lot of times, uh, uh, I mean, if I go to a theater, I just watch a film. I just enjoy it. the a lot of bad films also I enjoy. Uh, uh, like uh, so many times, I go, go with my friends or my wife, and they would say, "What oh, is like horrible film?" And, all. Uh, and they'll ask me, "How how was it?" I said, "No, it's nice." I mean, so then uh, it's a nice, it was a very shitty film. I said, "Yeah, okay, that's all later." I enjoyed watching the movie. I watching. just I enjoy going to the theater and, yeah. and you know sharing the, uh, the the screen with so many people. You know, so it's a beautiful thing. I really enjoyed experience. It. Yeah. And uh, one can always be critical about it later. Okay, okay. So now you come out of FTIA and uh, so Badadin is your first film, right? As a cinematographer? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. How different was it? Uh, how different were the theory, the theory and uh, the practical part of cinematography when you first start uh, started shooting your first film? 
I say, I mean, uh, we've actually, uh, we've all sh- had a... Uh, Diploma film. In FBI. Yeah, yeah. So we've had experience of, uh, um, mm. of the shooting fiction, um, mm. you know, narrative fiction. I mean, to, uh, I wouldn't say uh, uh, Baradin was my first shooting experience. It's okay. one that you uh, uh, do commerce in the, in the industry. You know, how to... Yeah. Uh, um, how to put it? I had, you know, not assisted uh, uh, anybody uh, after mm. passing out of the year. You you went <clears throat> to into filmmaking straight out of film school, right? I I, I started uh, uh, independent work immediately mm. after passing out. I never assisted anybody. Mm. So uh, when I was doing my first one, I I felt I was you know, I had just passed out, and uh, I did feel I wish I had assisted somebody, gained some oh. experience because I could feel that yeah, I could feel okay. that I was lacking the. <laughs> I mean, at that point of time, I felt that, you know, uh, 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 wish I had assisted somebody because of that lack of experience was scaring me a bit. Uh, uh, but, you know, looking back, I think it was, uh, uh, I think it was nice because my, uh, my, so what uh, did you lack? What did you lack? Can you give me an example? No, no, no. I, I, I don't know. I, it was just a fear. It was just a, uh, uh, a feeling. I mean, like, uh, looking back, I feel it was good because I, I, uh, my, uh, um, you know, my vision was very uh, was very self founded, not influenced by anything, mm. and and my techniques were also very much that uh, you know I I didn't learn it from anyone else, so it was very unique I think. Mm. And uh, uh, looking back, I think it was nice that it was I I don't regret it anymore. At that point of time, I felt it was a big responsibility. And, and uh, do you and do you remember your do you remember your first day on the set of your first film as a cinematographer? Yeah, I, I remember it very well. It was uh, uh, it was also the day of my first wedding anniversary. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> and okay. We, were, we started shooting a song in Darjeeling. And okay. uh, so it was a beautiful morning in, in Darjeeling. It was like in the hills. Very fond memories. Okay, okay. My you wife would also accompany me on the shoot. Lovely. And, and <laughs> we had an early day so because I wanted to party in the evening. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I skimmed through uh, some of your early films. I I watched parts of Road as well, the film that was produced by Ram Gopal Arma. You really tried this this uh, this Mad Max, Fast and Furious kind of look at that <laughs> film, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you yeah, tell was... me about uh, the earliest how you learned things on the go with these films? Uh, uh, Road was actually quite a challenging movie uh, to shoot mm. because it was. Uh, it, I, I don't think there was any precedent of uh, of another yeah. film which was. Of such uh, in India, in India, yeah. Yeah, like a complete road movie where the ca- camera mm. is always inside the car traveling. So we had to come out with very ingenious ways of you know how to. Otherwise, I my thing was the shots would look boring if you know mm. if, if it was standard coverage. Yeah, so we started yeah. doing tried a lot of things like how to move the camera around the actors. And mm. uh, those days, it was not very, um, it was technically very challenging because, uh, you know, the camera vendors those days, they wouldn't give a 435 uh, okay. on a uh, on a car rig. And so I had What's to shoot a with a... What's a 435? It's a it's film a... camera. It okay. it was the most uh, uh, preferred uh, advanced film camera those days. And mostly films would be shot on 435 those days. Uh, mm. Arri 3 is what we shot on. Uh, mm. And Arri 3 uh, mm, with co lenses. These were again not extremely good lenses. Those days, people were shooting with 435 with you know, the aeroscope lenses or, or Hawk lenses. Hmm. Uh, but no one would give me an expensive lens and an expensive camera to put on the car rig. So we had okay. to settle with, uh, uh, you know, lesser cameras, lesser lenses, which hmm. was, uh, and there was no video uh, assist. So okay. uh, a lot of times, a lot of times I was not being able to get to look through what we were shooting. Hmm. And, hmm. Uh, look through and what you were shooting with? You, you, no monitor and uh, yeah no 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 there was no monitor oh. okay so you yeah. just go with the viewfinder and find yeah that's what we used to do that's what we used to do uh, okay. uh, back in those days uh, uh-huh. of course by that by the time uh, like for my first film there was no video assist um, mm-hmm. on uh, on on road we had video assist for the uh, the other shots not for the car shots the car okay. shots okay. it was not possible to put a video assist mm-hmm. okay yeah and okay. it was in a desert and it was like it was a, a, it was it was quite challenging that way. It was, I mean, you're you're handling a lot of uh, uh, latitude. The, the, shadow, the uh, inside the car, it's not that bright. Like we're mm. dealing with a very very bright exterior in that uh, you know in the desert. So it was yeah. challenging, and I, I I it was nice. It was something uh, uh, 
I had told Ramu at the beginning of the film, which he um, used to keep teasing me. I, I told him that you know I want to. Uh, he asked me how are you looking at this? What do you want to do? So I said like for me, Road is the hero of the movie. He's like my character. He's okay. he's like the central character. So I, I have so he. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of shots where you place the camera on the road, literally on the road, and we see the people walking. Right? There were a lot, yeah, a lot of it, shots like that. Yeah. In fact, in fact, Ramu used to uh, tease me a lot. He would tell me that. you know it would be manoj just close up but he would tell me put a two shot like the road and manoj road and ah so, uh, he used to pull my leg because he used to tell me that chidip all this is all all this is intellectual talk how do you actually uh, um how do you actually implement this it's an idea but how do you uh, how do you translate that as a vision when you saying i want to have road as a character hmm. so i said i don't know it's an instinct i mean that's what i felt at that point of time that the road must have a character of its own and and, and i'd like to uh, look at it like that So one day we were doing a shot, and, and with, the thing with Ramu was that that he would always allow you to improvise a shot if you felt like, and he always said that do what you want, have to do, mm. and if I don't like it, we can do it again, but like don't stop yourself from doing something. So there was one shot where uh, 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 it was a low angle shot of the truck uh, pa- passing by, and as the truck mm. went by, I had to tilt the camera down to keep uh, uh, focus on the you know to, to keep the truck in frame. And it was oh. a, and no initially initially when the truck is closer to me, my tilting speed is. A little faster as a truck goes far off, my tilting speed uh, kind of diminishes. Now okay. I instinctively felt that you know this change of speed is a little uh, weird for me. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, while operating, I just felt. So I what I did is I kept on consistently tilting down, and at uh-huh. some point I felt that okay, I have to leave the truck now because okay. uh, uh, because I can't stop the movement. So I left the truck. I went down on the road and down on the road, and I, and I kept moving the camera on the road till for quite some time. And mm-hmm. what was the shot? Uh, uh, Ramu uh, saw it and he was very excited. He came and told me that was fantastic. What you did? Why did you do that? I said I don't know. I just felt it like he said that's that's superb. And that uh, evening after pack up uh, over a drink, he told me, "Shadi, uh, you know, uh, I give that to you. What are you talking about making road of the character? What you did today uh-huh. was like you almost, you know, uh, uh, made a character of the road." And I really uh, so so we spoke about it and like it was a very interesting um, exchange. I really had a good time working with Ramu. Really, really fantastic mind, and very exciting. Okay, now I'll name a few films. Please share uh, with me what are some uh, some new techniques that you applied in the film, and what you got to learn uh, from those films while working on those films. Iqbal, which is one of my uh, favorite films while growing up. Iqbal, I don't know what, I mean, but what really fascinated me was that the film was uh, uh, there are a couple of things. Uh, uh, which i really liked uh, uh, in the script and i i thought those are the points i must uh, they must come across very strongly one is i f- i really enjoy the fact that there was no uh, uh, a big bones were being made about the fact that the protagonist was uh, deaf and mute inability yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah i mean he was most normal i thought i i really liked the the normalcy with uh, with which that was dealt i mean mm. only a little later do you realize oh he can't talk and he can't yeah. yeah but there was so such nonsense in everyone's acceptance of that was so beautiful mm. i thought that was for me it was like a very very uh, uh, and i i wanted to capture the spirit of uh, of uh, iqbal that uh, that the boy was so spirited mm. and uh, and he was playing his game in the middle of uh, you know you know farm far you know farming lands and you know yeah, fields yeah. and there was something so beautiful about that for me that was you know incorporating that uh, uh, the nature around him the village Uh, as a part of the uh, his game i i i really enjoyed doing that i i thought that was fantastic it was such a new way of looking at the game and wow. their improvised techniques and uh, you know uh, and and that the village was so endearing to me i was so uh, you know uh, i i really uh, the location gave me so much i mean it was i really enjoyed staying there and like uh, uh, i thought the spirit of that place if i i must capture okay Uh, another uh, nagesh kukunor film door which is again it's a very emotional film very uh, very intense film about two women one from uh, one from the north east one from the rajasthan that was i mean for me that was uh, uh, visually it was very in fact we decided to uh, uh, to place the uh, film in these two different landscapes oh okay that so that we, was a choice made later uh, that was a choice made later yeah Okay. Originally, that's not what the script was. But oh. as we spoke, uh, we and Nagesh, we thought that would be exciting to do that. It would be also exciting to do the film in cinema scope where we really use the landscape. Yeah, yeah. The Rajasthan. Ah. 
yeah 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 mm-hmm. so we decided to shoot it on cinema scope and and we decided to have these two very contrasting landscapes one was a yeah, exactly movie, very very pretty uh, uh, uh-huh. himachal pradesh and one was uh, the deserts of rajasthan yeah, yeah. so dry and arid and uh, it was fascinating to try and um, that uh, to to explore the uh, the fact that you know this woman she actually finds a, a friendship and affection amidst this uh, very dry landscape mm. and uh, uh, and it was uh, that that contrapoint was very really exciting for me visually okay so so tell me one thing what attracts you to a film when you sign the project like have you said in ikbal that you were uh, you are interested in how the film doesn't look down upon uh, his disability so so what is it that uh, attracts you to scripts when you get those i mean when i read a script uh, i start seeing the film in my head hmm. and when i finished i've already seen when i finished when i finished reading the script i've already seen that film and if it's a film that i've enjoyed if it's a kind of a film that i've not seen before uh, hmm. then i do it i mean it's as simple as that for simple. me that you know if i if i like the film hmm. i mean when i read uh, uh, chakde i felt that you know this kind of film i have not seen and i'm looking at it very differently that you know this this has to be shot very differently and this so it is also stimulating and challenging and uh, you know uh, uh, and uh, okay. yeah by the time you come to chakde you are like 10 years into your filmography what all had changed in those 10 years because you debuted in 97 chakde came in 2006 or 7 how did you evolve as a cinematographer by then because by then it was also the time uh, people were converting to digital right it was uh, not, that... yet. not yet okay. we were still shooting on film we okay. were still shooting on film um, mm. di had come in digital grading okay. had come in so the film was being shot on film uh, mm. and uh, then we would scan it and uh, uh, do the grade on a uh, on a digital platform and then after uh, finish our grade we would uh, put it back on film we would record it back on film and the final mm. release print would be uh, on film Okay. So this okay. this had changed. This had for me it had changed from Janeman onwards. Uh, okay. Janeman mm. was the was the first film for me in which we used a, a, a digital intermediate. Mm. Uh, Iqbal was not. Uh, Door was not. Mm. Uh, do do and uh, and there was absolute physical uh, uh, prints. There was no digital uh, aspect. But Janeman was first, and then uh, then Chakde was the second film for me. Okay. So this much had changed. Uh, okay. Was Chakde a challenging film? Chakde was very challenging film. Chakde, of course, was uh, most challenging because you know, a, uh, w- you know, you really had to uh, show the state. Uh, I mean, this is these are the things that pointers that you know that was I, I was looking at when I read the script that that you have to show the dis- the disgusting neglect that uh, a woman's uh, sport like hockey is the kind of state it is in, the kind of mm. uh, neglect and the kind of disinterest that. Uh, authorities have hence uh, hmm. um, that has to be depicted correctly at the same time uh, uh, shimit had told me that you know uh, i don't want my girls to look do you want the girls to look very cool and we had to find that coolness is not a very uh, you know how do you say cool uh, um, you know they just like really cool smart <laughs> girls and 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 uh, and that's something that coolness is about the characters and that one had to find i, I thought how, that was that was how did you do that because it's a very internal thing right it's not external Yeah, they are just cool, and like you, uh, I mean, you uh, shoot them very smartly. You hmm. you don't uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know how you do it is a it's a uh, uh, these are uh, uh, I find it difficult to answer that, but I can say okay. that you know if you believe in that, if you kind of honestly, if you feel that in your heart, your decisions will be guided by by something. It it's an abstract idea, so it's very difficult to put it in words. Of what do I do to make make it look cool? Hmm. I don't know. I go with that intention, and uh, I believe my instincts will guide me uh, hmm. uh, when I'm putting up the shot. You know how I lens yeah. it. If, you know, uh, I just listen to myself. Something keeps telling me from inside. Uh, What's your favorite yeah. shot from Chakde? Oh uh, no, there's no favorite shot really. <laughs> This is a question that you always uh, you always dodge. You never answer your favorite shots. In this, there is no one favorite shot. I mean, okay. Uh, Mine has uh, to be the close-up of Shah Rukh when in the final, uh, when the win in the final. So oh, when he kind that, of uh, drops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I really that, like that. That this one shot, shot that didn't uh, uh, that didn't make it to the final edit. I okay. I really like the shot of there was a shot when uh, there were actually two shots. One 
when he comes after so many years when he uh, after he becomes a coach and after so many years he's come back to the academy and he's walking into uh, his room and mm. uh, and he just he's got a a, a ball uh, a football in his hand and he's just kind of playing with the ball he's bouncing the ball and he's walking around his room and he's okay. looking at uh, you know stuff it was a really beautiful shot i mean he didn't do anything he just looked and the camera kept following him and like uh, it was a very very personal moment moment and, and all that going on in his mind yeah all that all the determination of all that uh, uh, his previous humiliation all of that and charuk had done it so beautifully mm. that's that's one shot and there's another shot also which didn't make it to the movie was uh, you know before the early morning practice uh, ah, ah. there was a shot of uh, uh, the alarm going off and you see ah. as soon as it starts uh, a hand comes in and ah. shuts the alarm and you kind of uh, you know track back and you reveal that charuk is sitting there just waiting for the alarm it's early morning oh. he's sitting in a bed it's a very beautiful shot Yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, yeah. But I mean, in Chuck Day, the biggest uh, thing was also uh, challenge was also uh, hockey is unlike football or you know tennis or uh, something. It's not a very graceful sport. It's not dramatic. I mean, women. It's not dramatic. It's not. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's you're playing with a small ball, and mm. when you're playing, the heads are down, bended, so it's difficult to catch an expression, mm. and um, people are bending down. So it's not the most graceful. Uh, it looks so. How does one make it look uh, attractive? Also, I realized that uh, uh, you know that we are used to seeing a lot of uh, sport on television. Right. So uh, how you how you cover the sport is very important. I mean, it, it's going to look extremely boring and and television like if we do a standard coverage of you know covering the action and then going into closes, hmm. uh, hmm. you know that kind of thing. That I thought would be very boring. And I had to come out with uh, uh, you know uh, shooting the. Uh, uh, the matches in a different way that you've normally not seen before mm. hence the handheld hence the, the, the going into the field i mean i would really apart from a few establishing shots which would be uh, white mostly uh, we used uh, a lot of tele lenses we all we uh, um but most of the time inside the field with the players uh, moving with them and uh, that is something that you don't see on television coverage so uh, okay. and i thought handheld would be uh, 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 you know the way to go to give it that experience. So almost I, the entire thing was almost handled. Oh, almost I would say ninety-eight percent of Chakde was handled. Wow! Oh, wow! Not handled. just the matches. If you see even the mm. scenes and everything. Uh, okay, okay. I I personally like handheld because uh, it makes things more fluidic and it keeps the tension alive. And even if it's just two people talking to each other, if it's handheld, somehow the tension always. Uh, increases that something is going to happen things like that so uh, now uh, let's come to guzarish your your first, your association with uh, mr bansali begins to me guzarish it's like a beauty and the beast kind of film it's very gothic because it it's set in i would like to call that that bungalow of castle you know you use a lot of lights it it, it has a very gothic feel to it tell me about working on guzarish you know the, uh, the script offered a certain uh, uh, very interesting dichotomy the mm. whole conflict of uh, you know what ethan mascarenas uh, real state of his being is it's it's he's he's paraplegic he's um, he's stuck in his bed and uh, it's a very claustrophobic uh, uh, pathetic existence mm. uh, and and he really wants to you know get away from this life he wants mm. to be liberated and he wants to eventually he wants to leave it, end his life hmm. uh, because he can't take this anymore yeah yeah uh, at the same time uh, if you look inside him he's a very spirited person he wants to you know uh, uh, spread joy and spread hope and 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 he wants people to believe that you know there's a lot to life and so there's a strange conflict over there that hmm. the person the very person who's wants you to have hope and have uh, uh, faith in life uh, is the one who's want to hmm. end his life So this is that 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 conflict. I thought that was the key thing in the movie that we have to take that honestly depict that whole dichotomy that he has in inside. Inside, hence the a certain kind of a visual treatment. Hence the um, hence the yeah. uh, the lighting uh, 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 lighting at the film in that way and and, uh, and framing yeah. it in that way. You you played with a lot of shadows in Bujar Bujar. Yeah, exactly. Lots yeah. of shadows and uh, was oh, I assume that was also a very challenging film. It was. It was. A, uh, it was also challenging to shoot the entire film inside the that one 
I mean, like almost eight, seventy, eighty percent of the film yeah. is inside his room. Yeah. So uh, you had to come out with because it would look similar, no? So we mm. had to come out with uh, you know different types different of lighting, different to, types of season, yeah. different ways to shoot, shoot it so that you know one scene doesn't look uh, uh, repetitive. By the end of it, uh, we had like run out of ideas. Okay, okay, what to do? And me and Sanjay would think, okay, shall we do this? And say, no, we've already done that. So okay, mm. let's try. Let's try uh, something like this. It was like quite a, a brainer for us. So to me, Guzarish was a film that blew my mind. I remember seeing there is there is a great shot where uh, Aishwarya Rai is giving back to back to Hrithik Roshan where he's tied, you know, where he's tied in that bag, and you see a light uh, coming from the right corner of the room. That was that was brilliant. I mean, I hadn't seen anything uh, like that. Uh, to me, you know, the, the the shafts of light were were like like the the like the symbols of. Uh, Uh, of hope and 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 uh, and you know, uh, I mean, it's a lot of darkness. That shaft of light, yeah, is yeah, like a more like a ray of hope. I mean, to put it very very plainly, but uh, okay. yeah, so you, you, that's why there was a lot of shafts in, in uh, Uzarish. I think. Now let's come to the more more exciting part of your career. I mean, I'm not saying that whatever you had done was not exciting. You do Doom Three, and then you follow it up with uh, Chatush Khan. You know the uh, thing about Dhoom Three was, uh, uh, I mean, my uh, thing was, hey, we have to shoot action in a way that is not shot, seen before. We, mm. have, the, you know, the action has to be has to mm. be different kind of action. So uh, mm. that was uh, uh, something that I would continuously question myself that you know how to uh, how to make it more exciting, how to make give the people, uh, the audience, uh, an experience that they hadn't uh, seen before, because mm. there's a lot of expectation from Dhoom Three. And, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah! Oh my God, yeah. one of those expectations when it came out. Yeah, so the the action had to be spectacular. Hmm. So we did, a, you know, everything, and, and uh, my director um, Victor, he he is also a very very visual director. He was very interested in the visual. So uh, we would come up with, you know, we would like uh, at the storyboarding stage itself, we had, uh, uh, you know. We started that, and then a lot of improvisation on set. Uh, an excellent team of uh, uh, action uh, choreographers, all that. But apart from that, another huge challenge in Dhumthi was the double role. Yeah, and you know there were certain things that you have to keep in mind when you're shooting double role, like um, you know the two act, the the actor and his other self. Uh, mm. There should be minimal interaction between them, and you know we should have minimal camera movement mm. and and all that stuff. So we thought that. We should do everything that's not supposed to be done as far as the double role is concerned, and okay. uh, because uh, that's the only way that the audience will completely believe in the fact that there are two actors playing this role. There are two different characters, mm. and 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 the success in the film is, I think, in that that uh, uh, the two characters look completely believable that two people have played. Yeah. So uh, we wanted to, you know, uh, take that out of the way that you know. Uh, All those regular uh, things of you can't do this with the double role. We'll not. We'll, we'll we'll do everything that's you're not supposed to do. We'll have interaction. We'll have camera movement. We so we, I mean so we're like asking for a lot of trouble <laughs> and uh, so became extremely know, challenging. And if I you know you're not once, going to. I know. Sorry, I know you're not going to like this question. That whenever I ask you how you did it, but tell me the tricks that you used in Doom Three to capture the double role. No? So we, of course, it's a, the the technology is called motion uh, uh, control. We use mm-hmm. motion control cameras to do that because mm-hmm. once you do a, a camera move with one of the actors, so mm-hmm. what we used to do was uh, Amir would uh, perform the scene with uh, uh, the director Victor uh, mm-hmm. playing the other Amir. Okay. Okay. okay so, and, and from that pass, we would take first Amir, and mm-hmm. uh, then we would immediately play it back, and uh, uh, whatever Victor had done, Amir would kind of recreate that, mm-hmm. uh, but. This time, you know, one of the, the challenging part was that that uh, the second time Amir is doing it, he needed a lot of info because when you when you're moving the camera so much and when you're doing so much interaction, that he really needed uh, a lot of uh, uh, while performing the second pass, he needed a lot of feedback of what uh, Victor had done, of what mm. his first pass had done, and you have to be continuously feed him with all this information. Uh, mm. uh, so we had several cameras, which was called performance capture cameras. Okay. they were not the actual okay. film camera and the footage was not used but those mm-hmm. cameras were to guide amir uh, with uh, his you know, movements uh, and uh, with his yeah movements. yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah so uh, so if you can do all that really well then it becomes uh, uh, much uh, you know things like timing things like uh, uh, you know look line 
and all that becomes extremely critical uh, when you're doing uh, uh, double rolls in such a complicated way. You're doing interaction and you're uh, uh, doing camera movements. Uh, there, the act, the eye line of the uh, of the two characters they become if, even if you know goes off a little bit, uh, something will uh, as an audience something will tell you it's wrong. Something is not right over here. So. Uh, so it was a very complicated motion control job. There was a company called General Lift who had come down from LA, and mm. they did the whole thing. And, and uh, they were really, really, uh, they really helped us push the envelope a lot. I mean, the the prime example would be the sequence where uh, you know before the date, uh, uh, one Amir is in front of the mirror, and the mm. other one appears in yeah. the mirror, and the yeah. and the shot goes on, and the camera keeps on moving around them, and eventually there's a slap. So yeah. that was one one really really difficult scene in terms of. Uh, a double rule because we also uh, doing extremely high contrast lighting so uh, it, it was quite a <laughs> technically quite a challenging thing is is chatush kon the most fun you had uh, as a cinematographer because i can just see you you enjoying the process the the way you play with the lights there is a sequence that's entirely shot in in red is green there is blue Tell me, is it the most fun you had uh, uh, in your career? Um, no, I mean, I mean, I, uh, I can't say most fun because I've had fun on a lot of uh, films. And it would be unfair to uh, those films if I say that. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, if I say that Chotushun had most fun, but yeah, I mean, the couple of things say the film was being shot in Calcutta, and I mm-hmm. really enjoy shooting in uh, Kolkata. It's my hometown, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, and you know, it's it's really, really nice. And and Srijit is a is an old friend. And okay. uh, we were like, you know, just it was a very casual uh, experience, and we were having genuinely having fun. And like, uh, uh, for me, it was uh, also uh, uh, liberating in the sense that Dhoom Three. I just done Dhoom Three before that, and Dhoom Three was a very big budget film. It was like yeah. a really, and, and Chotushkun was probably uh, one tenth the budget of. Uh, I think okay. Chotushkun the budget must have been what well, I don't. Maybe one and a half crores or something, but supposed to be the budget of the film, hmm. and we had to shoot it like in some twenty days. So oh, uh, that's it, twenty days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I think something okay. like twenty, twenty-one days is what we took, and and like oh. uh, it was very liberating to shoot it without you know so much equipment and with much facilities, and like uh, we wouldn't have a panther dolly, and we wouldn't have uh, like for instance uh, uh, we we're shooting the night sequence in. Uh, uh, In 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 Shantini Ketan, where you know where the car gets. Ah, uh, uh, oh, right, right, right. The yeah, the right car. The they the break car breakdowns and they had to that walk. Yeah, and I was uh, uh, for the recce when I went for the recce, I was like giving light requirements and I was telling my system that you know uh, these these are the places where you can put some rostrums and you know the dinos go uh, can go over there. Hmm. And then the the production manager very sheepishly came and told me, sir, we don't have uh, budget for rostrum. So I said, uh-huh. if you don't give me rostrum, where will I put the dinos? Uh, what act, what exactly rostrum and dinos i'm so sorry but, they, uh, rostrum is a is like a is a high, it's a uh, it's a stand which goes up to 15 20 30 feet height okay 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 huh. you know, it's like a platform that you make okay uh, huh. and on top of that you put a light so that the light comes from a certain height and a certain distance yeah hmm. uh, and so i i told him if you don't give me rostrum so i'm going to put my put my dino lights uh, hmm. so he said sir we don't have budget for dino lights So mm. I then turned to the director and I asked him that you know why have you written the scene like that yeah. in the night in the forest if you don't have budget yeah. for lighting? Uh. So he said no, yeah, but you know what to do? I've written. So what to do now? So, okay, so we had to come with some solution, and uh. so we gave them uh, uh, some torches. And I told Astrid that you know are you going to be okay that all that you could see is what the torch will light? Uh, I think it's quite interesting, but let's uh, but you understand that you won't see much. He said yeah, fine. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but I'll get to se- get a sense of where they are. I said, "Yeah, you'll get a sense of where they are." Mm-hmm. And it was see, and, and I, I really like that scene that what we did finally in the forest with actually was actually just lit with a few torches and and, uh, and the crew and, was holding torches. No, no, no. The actors were holding the torches. Oh, that's it. Okay, those no yeah, additional. Yeah. Whatever is on the screen, that is the lighting. I think there's from distance maybe there's just one additional ambience light at the most. Sometimes mm-hmm. not even that. And the actors okay. were holding the. Uh, the torches that's it we actually didn't use anything else and mm-hmm. it was it was just you know just liberating to you know to find solutions and mm-hmm. you know to uh, to do things that way. it was very very it was good fun and like uh, it was very less pressurizing and, and i thought it was an interesting way of looking at the four different films because there are actually mm-hmm. four different films yeah yeah two within the one film mm-hmm. and uh, 
I thought it was very really interesting color code that you know you use the three primary colors red blue and green, blue and green. Um, mm-hmm. as a uh, as a theme and then when you mix red blue and green what you get is white mm-hmm. so uh, the culminative story would be a you know a combination of these three colors oh, be black and white so that's just something that was in our minds now i'll show you a few shots from the film few shots i love and tell me what what went behind now i know that we are getting too analytical here and probably dissecting it too much but i just wanted to uh, know your mind when what was running in your mind when you uh, lit that shot or when you uh, framed it and shoot it this you remember this shot yeah so tell me how does it happen that in the script it must have been just two people sitting and talking right but you choose to do uh, do it like this you go with the shadows and then uh, in the same shot you you get a top angle of that can you see this yeah yeah so what drives you like what tells you to uh, shoot it in a certain way when it can very well be just over the shoulder shots of two people talking i know i mean this particular sequence for instance we are trying to uh... Uh, create a drama they, where there isn't one really you know hmm. uh, okay i mean okay. Uh, almost in the, in the film we almost uh, uh, mm. trying to fool the audience by by uh, by saying that some plot is being hatched you almost think that uh, uh, this aparna sen's husband this character uh, hmm. he's actually plotting uh, something against his wife that's hmm. a kind of uh, you kind of leading the audience so you're trying to it's deceiving drama. it's deceiving yeah yeah it's kind of a, yeah yeah you kind of block this guy's face with a glass of water or mm. you know play with shadows and like you know so i mean uh, when i read the script it kind of tells me that you know this thing you need to do something uh, it can't be simple it, you have to kind of do something mm. and and yeah i don't know if that answers your question no it does it does it does actually now uh, you win national award for that and you follow it up with bajirao mastan tell me about bajirao mastan again epic epic film but also has a very intimate uh, love story at its end how did you approach baji rao mastan from the uh, uh, again it's a beautifully written script uh, mm. uh, it's extremely descriptive the screenplay was extremely descriptive. i i really once uh, the first time i read this film i was like really really uh, uh, started seeing the film almost uh, uh, there and uh, then i uh, those certain things which really attracted me again one was the the spirit of uh, of of bajira who was who had helplessly fallen in love and that he was really trying to give dignity to that and uh, there was no uh, 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 there was he was unapologetic about it and 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 there was a very beautiful angle of of kashi bai who was like uh, I I thought that relationship dynamics was very interesting. It was actually like a very beautiful love story. Yeah, it uh, is. Not just with Miss with Mastani, but also the Kashi love story. That was uh, that. In fact, interested me a lot more. That what was his uh, equation with Kashi, and what was uh, uh, and how how beautiful a relationship that was. Where he so honestly uh, uh, admitted that he had fallen in love with another woman, and, and yet that. Uh, uh, the, and 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 finally that scene where uh, kashi comes back to him in the tent and mm. and the journey of bajira was very interesting you know that that what what sanjay was trying is that you set the film in chaniwarwada and mm. in the in the grandeur of of chaniwarwada and uh, but sanjay had told me that you know just remember that um, uh, the 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 marathas were not uh, excessive they were they were frugal and they were there was something very minimalist about them so in, in within this thing of you know the grand chaniwar wada we have to find a language which is a little minimalistic visually uh, and and uh, and remember that there is a there is a path that the film will have that eventually look at how bajira was going to die he is going to die in a in a simple tent mm. with nothing but one jute tent and and or he's he's just wearing a a white cloth and his bare body and like this this nothing so there is a movement towards you know uh, uh, towards minimalism and okay. and uh, and if you see that that's that's the path the film takes it just kind of starts losing its frills and towards uh-huh. the end you have nothing you have just one one man in a simple okay. tent with a white cloth and you have mustani in a uh, in a bare uh, uh, prison with nothing but a chain and just holding her so it's you know it becomes less uh, uh, elemental and it becomes 
and and also the the war uh, uh, i mean we never shot i never shot a war that was very exciting you know this is a very uh, surprising angle because minimalism is definitely not an attribute uh, associated with uh, banchali's films and as you tell i realized that the film kind of starts on a high with the grandeur and it takes a more minimal path so uh, now uh, how differently did you approach padmavat visually oh uh, you know the the, the uh, thought did come to me once uh, uh, and i in fact discussed with sanjay that back to back we are doing two hmm. period films hmm. and um, you know uh, So Sanjay told me that why are you bothering about that? I mean, uh, are you seeing the same film when you are mm. reading the script? I said no. So he said, don't worry about it. You know, the, what was uh, uh, what was uh, bothering me was that the um, for all the indoor scenes, the mm. lighting tools uh, were seen, right? I mean, this is all pre-electricity days, so it would be uh, basically flame sources. Mm. And I was wondering how to uh, how to uh, you know make it look different. Mm-hmm. And uh, then something struck me i realized that uh, uh, you know uh, there was you know the story of padmavat and bajira was set a few centuries apart i think padmavat was 11th century and mm. uh, bajira was probably uh, 1740 so it'll be 18th century mm. um, and uh, though both both the, the things were the, the indoors would be lit by flames uh, mm. by the time we did uh, bajira uh, glass had already been discovered and it was there in india so a lot of the lamps would be uh, protected by a glass covering okay, okay. the diyas would be have, have, have a lot of uh, hmm. have some glass covering and they, hmm. hence there will be less interaction with the wind okay. while in uh, in 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 padmavat the light sources would be open and uh, wow. there will be more wind interaction hmm. and hence i realized that, you know you know in padmavat i could flicker the light a lot more uh, you know if there's more wind hitting the flames then it will move a lot more and yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It will more flicker hmm. so i i realized that yeah i could use a little more flicker and i i if you see i've used and it helped me because the story of padmavat was also more dramatic so hmm. the, the flicker was helping me and uh, in uh, in padmavat also another aspect was there that the, the 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 film was set in two worlds one was the world of Uh, Kilji, Mahmati, yeah, and one of the world of Kilji, and there was an option of you know you know making these two worlds very different, having mm. a completely different lighting approach, and uh, and to me actually, uh, Padmavat was a, a, a story of beauty and the beast, and there was beauty on one side and beast on one side, and we were slowly, 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 slowly moving towards a crescendo where the beauty and the beast would meet, and I was visually in my design, I was trying to. It was a very conscious. Uh, uh, a process a thought that i have to finally work my way towards you know uh, the end where the beauty and it, and beauty would beauty and the beast would kind of come very close to each other and uh, wow. that's where the, the worlds will meet and and you know um, that's something that uh, 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 a lot of thought went into that now, how does one come up with the climax and sanjay always said that you know uh, uh, we had seen a painting of uh, uh, um, of gagandendra tagore uh, mm. um, at the time of our uh, prep work and mm. uh, sanjay really liked the painting and he told me that look at this how the you know there's a it's, it's nothing to do with the climax of padmavat it was just a uh, painting of a, a procession going and uh, probably uh, i think it's a, a religious procession or something happening very dark very uh, but he liked a certain kind of uh, in the in the painting there's a certain way there's some sense of movement in there mm. um, it's it's a certain fluidity is there and he told me that look at that and you know uh, try to give me the sense in the when we doing the climax and he said i i want a i want a river of red like a a, a river uh, with blood flowing into oh my the, god yeah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. that was uh, that was uh, the idea he told me that you know remember this in my mind this is this is what i have in mind that like a a river of blood kind of flowing in and finally merging into the fire so uh, oh my god that's the johar uh, there is a top angle yeah. where everyone's climbing down the stairs oh yeah 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 Oh. So I never forgot that. I always remember that that brief, that you know every shot that you're putting. I remember you. Know, I have to get that. You know that's what. Okay. Now speaking of lighting, Gangobai also spans over a couple of uh, decades when pre-electricity and post-electricity days, right? No, 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 no. Not no. really. I was Gangobai actually to... uh, starts in 1948 uh-huh. and ends somewhere around 1961, 62. So because I, I was so there was electricity to... already. i was talking to the production designers and they told me that they had to change the lighting because 
Uh, okay, probably electricity was discovered, but that area was not prominently lit. So after I think in the second half of the film, in the fifties uh, era, they had to use you had to use different lighting. That's what they told. Yeah, me. we did. We did. There was a change. There was like as if you know you start uh, uh, introducing a few more, you know modern elements uh, mm. as far as that. Yeah, but we tried to do it very very. Uh, uh, Very very gently, without you know being very obvious. Yeah, it's it's, it's not it's not noticeable. Uh, yeah, we, because you know I I, I thought that we shouldn't make it very noticeable because uh, you know it will be I uh, it could be a little distracting. Yeah, it would have been. And also the uh, we didn't want the overall look of the film to because we are eventually dealing with a period of probably fifteen years in the mm. time span, and. Uh, uh, One one shouldn't do it because the overall look. Uh, uh, it was very important to retain the overall look of the film. Lovely, we had a great conversation about Thakre. Now let's talk about Thakre. Thakre is also my one of if if I had to rate your works, your top five works, Thakre would be in top three without a doubt. So I'm so happy. I I I, I also uh, I'm very fond of uh, um, my work in that film. Uh, the black and white. I'm not a lot of a lot of people haven't seen it. uh unfortunately and uh, a lot of people haven't liked the movie uh however i i i really uh, enjoyed working with abhijit phanse and like uh, quite a few interesting things that we did please share is no? there a particular scene that you like uh, in in thakre the scene where uh, thakre makes a phone call and you see shivaji in the background like there are uh, a yeah. lot of in that scene and then uh, uh when he is in the prison And a prominent person comes to meet him. We see both of them in the. I love the entire black and white portions of the film. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Those are some of the uh, interesting murder sequence in the rain. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that was my favorite. I really enjoyed shooting that sequence, that rain sequence. So I'll show you a few shots from Thakre. Please tell me what went behind the making of this. Also, it. I watched Thakre right after watching Chetu's Cone. And I kind of discovered that you have a signature, like you have a signature shot. Tell me whether it do I? I try. Do. I try very hard uh, not to have a signature because I think it's a uh, it's not a good thing. A cinematographer should serve not, the script. And, no, no, no. It's not. I, I, I really want to believe that I don't have a signature. That I oh, just, my signature would be the the script would uh, give the signature for that particular film. I'll show you. But I want to know what you. But I want to know what you felt is my signature. So I like how you frame normal conversations. So this is the scene where uh, Thakre talks to his uh, editor right before he gets uh, right before he signs his resignation and uh, leaves. So this is a shot from. So you see a bench here. You see a we see a bench here, and we see your focus is on the people, but it's not completely on them. We see a lot of elements in the frame. This is one thing, and now I'll show you uh, a similar shot. See this. Yeah, shot. this is just to, yeah, just to make it look exciting. This one also. This is why I like this shot. I like how okay. it's not just about the character space; it's about the. Yeah, I think a lot of other things. We normally tend to always uh, think that the face is the most important uh, thing. I mean, there's so many things that can tell the story, mm -hmm. and sometimes yeah. by by by, by uh, you know blocking something, it can become more interesting. when you don't see don't see it uh, completely uh, you know uh, you know the, when when you don't say a few words uh, you can say a lot by silences also no? and right. by it's a whole well, game of uh, uh, what you show and uh, you know I, i i like to say that you know there's this this light for you to see and darkness hmm. for you to imagine so okay. i i like to play with that 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 you know uh, by not showing i can i can you know uh, i can stir your mind your mind will uh, uh, you know see things and it will like uh, imagine things okay. so also that's that that's what i think is really exciting to experience that agar sab kuch dikha diya sab kuch ekdam react then it will become this more like you know the usual way that you watch things on television that it's just put out and you know uh, i like to play with the audience's mind okay that, you know that you don't reveal something and you don't block something and then you kind of tease the audience and you kind of invite them to participate in that experience right yeah so have a look at this shot from chatush pon this shot again elements it's not mm. just the person but 
again they are so i no, think these are the that we normally don't see in life we never see see things like this when we are you know talking to somebody you're normally at his eye level and, uh, you're, uh, and you're you know you know seeing through something in the foreground like this which mm-hmm. is where i think it should be uh, in cinema one should do these kind of things to you know make it look right so i show. felt so i really felt that you had an inclination towards the atmosphere of a character rather than just focusing on the dialogue so that's yeah, what yeah. i of course, that's of course. what i meant that was the does tell a lot of the story no? you can choose to tell your stories like that where you use atmosphere i think it's a more visual experience so yeah so that's what i meant by uh, like when i felt uh, you had a certain way to, of of signature shot kind of thing. so if you had to give an advice to upcoming cinematographers what would what would it be i would say uh, uh, you know uh, have a lot of faith in the image because uh, uh, you know remember that people are going to come to the theater uh, only if the image is very mm. is is interesting and, and they feel you know uh, you, you have to compel the audience to come to the theater so when you when you setting up a shot you have to remember that you know this has this has to be a, a visual experience that people will come to the theater for so uh, to put in a thought about why they're putting up the shot ask questions uh, inside themselves that how do they want to see it you know because a lot of the answers will come from there and um, yeah that's it and 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 generally in, uh, for people who are uh, uh, young cinematographers who are starting off i would say that you know do take a lot of still, uh, take your still photography very seriously uh, okay okay do, uh, do a lot of still photography do, shoot uh, uh, don't think that we have unlimited stock uh, you know limit yourself to the when you're going out to shoot limit yourself to uh, Um, the number of shots that you will do, uh, mm. just because you can, uh, you know, uh, like in our times, uh, uh, we used to get films with some thirty-six rolls in it, and okay. on entire vacation, like we could take only those thirty-six pictures. So, oh, just thirty-six uh, you know, pictures. Where you can, yeah. So, and today you can like shoot as much as you want, and and uh, and then the ones you don't like, you can delete them, and and mm. you can you know format the memory card again, and mm. so uh, we have started, uh, uh, you know, we've lost that. Uh, 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 how precious the every shot was when you know when you think about every shot as a, as a precious shot you will put your mind into it in a certain way and you want to you know that's a very important thing i think that putting your mind into that every shot that you take and you know you think whether that this is, is this the best way to look at it maybe a little left right or you know maybe moving away to another uh, vantage position can give me a better uh, photograph that that thought is very required and and the thought is what will bring in a lot of yourself into the frame and then when it, only then will it uh, your art will become personal and only then uh, will somebody else be interested because you know if you shoot like somebody else why would they ask you to shoot their film you have to shoot it like yourself and and, and you know that and i would also urge you to read a lot more okay. you know it's something that kind of stimulates your mind to visualize mm-hmm. uh, and, and that's the whole game what was the most challenging uh, part of your career in your 20 25 year old career is there a it hasn't come oh wow Oh, okay. So you. I'm, I'm. I'm waiting for that. So thank you very much for your time, sir. I definitely had a. I uh, got to learn a lot, and I'm sure viewers will be watching this. Will also have a lot of takeaways. Thank you very much for your time. It was my pleasure. It was a pleasure talking to you as always.